Hi guys. So the next couple of days we're going to be using the information that you got while you were watching the video that I posted for yes for t yesterday on using a dichotomous key. So dichotomous keys are kind of like a puzzle and they should be kind of fun. I think they're fun because you're trying to identify something and figure out what it is and and the things that I'm going to have you identify are all really common shells along the Connecticut shoreline, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Maine. Um, if you go to any of the beaches around here, within driving distance, you'll find these these shells. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over what I'm expecting from you over the next few days. Don't worry, they're going to be due next Monday, April 27th, for when you have a look at these things and, and get a chance to, to get into some identification. I'm also going to be doing a Google Meet um, on Friday for anybody who has any questions, concerns, issues, want to just check in with me, uh, but we'll be, we'll be doing that a little bit later. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to talk about what I'm expecting from you while we go through this um, uh, video. So here's what we're going to do you have two different groups of shells that we're going to be using to identify. I've taken pictures of each organism, several pictures of each organism, and I've put them in, I've organized them by either letters or numbers. If it's, if it's letters, it's a kind of snail. Snails are in a group called Gastropoda. Uh, all of these things are in a phylum or large grouping called Mollusca. So they're all mollusks. And then I have two different kinds of mollusks. I have class Gastropoda, which are the snails. That's going to be letters A through G. And I have bivalves, which are clam-like uh, critters, that from 1 through 7. Okay. So all of the gastropods start on page 702 except letter C. Letter C is a little different. I'm going to let you kind of figure that out by yourself. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a couple of seconds and, and explain what I'm expecting from you. But let's start out with there are really three things you're going to fill out. The first thing you're going to fill out is this piece here. Oop, let me see. Come on. This piece right here. Oh, Yeah, let's, let's try that again this piece right here where I'd like you to put down the page numbers that you go to and the steps that you've taken. The next piece is when you're when you figure out what it is you're gonna tell me its common name and then its scientific name. So I've given you a really good example of this Let me. and the examples letter D is already done for you and we did it during the video. So here's what I'd like you to see. Let me let me enlarge this a little bit so you could see it. Let's uh, here's what I'm giving you pictures. So here's the pictures of the shell that that oop, here's the pictures of the shell that I want you to identify and then come on. Okay, come on. Hold on. All right. So here's my letter D, your letter D. And so here's what I've given you. Uh, when you, when you're going to start at page 702. And on page 702, if you watch my video, I actually go step one on 702 to step five on 702 to step six, which then tells me that it's a kind of periwinkle and go to page 7.05 on page 7.05 I go through step 1 to 2 which leads me to step 2 which then tells me it's Litterina litteria the common periwinkle so these are the steps that you're taking to get there and then this is the common name and this is the scientific name I'd like you to just tell me the steps that you've taken from page 7.02 through wherever it leads you and then the common name and the scientific name. Okay, 
So, having having done that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about both the gastropods and the bivalves and go through the the pertinent pictures that I want you to see. Oop, that I want you to see. Let me see if I can do this 100%. Okay. So, gastropod A is the first one, and there's a couple of things I want you to notice. The first thing I want you to notice is that going around, oop, backward, come on, Ken, get it right. Going around the spire is a channel or a groove that goes all the way around as this shell, as this animal lays down its shell, it leaves this groove in, in the shell itself. The other thing I want you to see is here is the, the siphonal canal and this is the siphonal notch. The little cutout is the little siphonal notch. Okay. This is a fairly large snail. Very common. Um, should be pretty straightforward after that. Okay. So let me, okay. Come on. The next one is also a fairly large snail. And the, the one thing I want to, a couple of things I want to point out to you. The first one is it does have a D-shaped opening. And if you look right here, you can see it's got this hole. This hole is called the umbilicus. And while we're doing that, it does not have a callus. One of the things that in the key is a callus. A callus is like a hard, almost like a plate that's right here. This one does not have a callus. So that should make it pretty easy to identify this guy. Okay? All right. Moving right along. This is the one shell that you're not going to start on page 7.02. You're going to start on page 7.01. For this shell, start on 7.01. And it's a fairly straightforward um, shell. Okay. D we've already done. So we're going to move along to E. E is a fairly small shell, but it's pretty cool. The one thing I want you to see is that it has, let me pick up the pen. It has these, these, um, what do they call them? Ribs that going this way. And it also has ridges going this way. Okay, so it has ribs and spiral ridges. And that should really be helpful. This is a small snail. Um, it does have the, the siphonal canal and notch. So um, other than that, you should be able to identify that pretty rapidly. F is a little tricky. Um, F is a, is a, let me see if I can make this a little bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. But what I really want you to see on this is if you notice because of the, because of the ridges and the and the and the um and the the um ribs it forms this distinct waffle pattern that is a huge key okay i've also given you the the if you look at here's the size of the opening come on Here's the size of the opening compared to the size of the shell. And, and if you notice, most of my pictures have a, a ruler next to them. It's really a, a meter stick that I have that's right next to it. So that should be very helpful. All right. All right. Um, G is a little bit different. Again, it's a little bit challenging. But G is a larger shell. If you notice from the from the meter stick that I have here, each one of each line, each number is a centimeter. So these are these this is probably one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half centimeters long, which is a pretty good size shell. Okay. Um and I found this while I was scuba diving in about 20, 20, 25 feet of water. In, in off the coast of Massachusetts, in, in Gloucester, Massachusetts, a place called Folly Cove. Um, th it's a pretty cool shell. It's a little challenging. Do your best with it, okay? All right. 
So that's it for all of the gastropods. Those start on uh, page 7.02. Okay. So I will make a second video dealing with these guys, which are the bivalves, and I'll post that for tomorrow. Okay? Thank you very much. And I'm going to stop recording.